Okay, welcome back everyone to more Road Warden. So previously, I finished everything I think about what I have to do inside this inn. And I was planning to travel. Let's see. Okay, the road to Hovlaven is to the west. Yes, yeah, so let's head that way. The road uphill meanders. Slowing you down and forcing you to pay close attention, not only to the shadows of the trees, but also to the tight, rocky passages. It's early in the morning. Passages. You can't help but notice a few caves and fine ambush spots. I keep an eye out for any sign of life. Hmm. Ruined village. Standing in front of the gate, you hear no voices. No tools at work, no steps. Dozens of birds live among the collapsed roofs. Roofs, Their fluttering, singing, and squawking is free of worries. If you want to travel any further, you need to ride around the palisade. Yeah. Searching the ruins may take a lot of time. The broken gate in the north will lead you to the village. So the south, the, the sound of a gentle river reaches you from the east where you see a saggy fence surrounding an overgrown pasture. Behind the burnt building in the east, you see an oddly barren field. Huh. So I'm from up here then. I'm looking to south from here. Okay, no, I'm actually down here already. I'm looking upwards. Let's see. Let's check that building near the field. The broken logs and planks are charred, while the wooden walls are rot rotten and covered in moss. You see no ashes or dust, proving that the fire happened long ago. The smell is awful, and there are no reasons to stay for long. You see no furniture, just some broken shelves. It was just a storage room. The valuable odds and ends are, were already taken by the scavengers. Okay, let's take a closer look at the gate. We should probably go slowly so we can make sure we don't get ambushed. Ah, huh. ruined village. The palisade is in good shape, and the entrance wasn't even touched by the fire. It was torn away, possibly thrown. The amount of used force... I think I got the backwards. The amount of force used must have been huge, but you'd expect that it would push the gate into the village, not away from it. You don't see any marks of a dragon bite. A troll could toss such planks. But after so many years, you see no paw prints. A maid? You can't really tell. <laughs> Where do you want to go? I'm thinking... Let's see, southwest is the field, southeast is the pasture. Uh, let's go to the pasture, I think that's most likely southeast. Okay, they even moved the map for me. You don't, don't find a single sign of the livestock that lived here in the past. Any bones, horns, antlers, or dung have already been devoured by the wilderness. The pasture ends at the river. Here it is. On the opposite bank, the meadow turns into a thick forest, impenetrable for a rider. What are the chances that a herd of defenseless animals could get there and survive? The breaks in the south southern fence, down here, wasn't made by some brute force. You find axe cuts in the spot that were ultimately broken away. After all these years, there are no tracks that you could follow. Okay, return to the main road. Okay, let's check the field. I was hoping that we might be able to find something useful there. The field's in the south this way. Okay, let's open it up. You're surrounded by what looks like a field plowed in late autumn, disturbed by hundreds of rains and snowfalls. There's a few clumps of grass and wheat, but a place like this one, abandoned for years, should already have turned itself into a green layer. A barren field? Maybe it was overused, but you would still expect the weeds to sprout. A curse? The path leading west from here ends at the edge of the forest, of the field, shifting into a meadow, then a forest. Okay, we got there anyway. In the north, you see a path leading around the palisade. Huh. I probably shouldn't be spending this. 
I don't have too much of this. Uh, I think I'm gonna hold off then. It might be useful if I fall into combat. Okay. You feel a slight ache in your stomach. Uh oh. No, I'm not that hungry. I might be getting cursed. Okay, explore the southwest part of the village. Wait. No, that was still over there. Uh, inspect the palisade in the west, I guess. The tracks of human footwear and many, many more ape footprints cover the path formed around the palisade's breach. And as far as you can tell, the freshest footprints lead to the village. The wooden stakes spread on the ground are rotten, covered in mushrooms, small flowers, insects, and worms. A good source of food, of animal or goblin food, blah. Though you'd expect them to also hunt for the birds and eggs. The meadow in the west turns into a forest quickly. The grasses in the north, I did turn on the timer, right? The grasses in the north surround dozens of tree stumps already covered with moss and fungi. Going south, you'll reach a large field, though you don't see any crops. Huh, I shouldn't enter the forest, especially not in this area. It's unpredictable. You feel a slight aching in your stomach. This is bad. What's causing it? Huh. Okay, clearing to the west? I don't think so. Maybe we should just go to the main village. So maybe the main southwest part of the village. Yeah, let's go. Cover the village. That's a ruined village. The buildings, some of which have collapsed, are made of wood, now charred and rotten. You spot claw marks on the walls, especially close to the doors and window frames. They could belong to a dragonling, or a large wolf, larger than the grey ones, or a corpse eater. Too many options to make a guess. Yet no beast remains in sight. Uh, it's happened a long time ago, I doubt there's anything here. Unless it was smart and decided to create a home here. You find the remains of clothes, furniture, odds and ends. Only one object seems to be of use. A basket, like fist trap made of vines and willow branches. If a large fish swims into it, it won't be able to get out on its own. Huh, it's quite large, but I can fit it on my saddle. It's mine now. Huh. Should I just leave the village? Because it looks like I'm getting sick or something. Go to the main square. To pass the village, I guess I have to hit, keep going north or something. Okay, let's go to the main square. Now we probably should do something about... Huh. Is there something I could see about why I'm having problems? I'll probably end up dying in whatever this is. There must be a curse or something, because I'm getting, seeming to be getting worse as I go in. Let's go head out and see if I progress. To the southwest. Okay, let's try basically the same one, right? No, no way, so I'm doing the forest in the north. Okay, let's create the spell. Let's see what's happening. Okay. You unpack the wooden spheres, pleasantly smooth and light. The entire set fits in the palm of your hand. You place them in various spots, marking their positions by sticking a branch in the soil. All you can do now is wait. So you brush Odal for a bit and make sure the saddle doesn't bother it. When you return to gather your amulets, all of them are much warmer than your skin. The entire field is corrupted, though seeing how there are already some plants growing on from it, the spell is fading away. The curse is most likely as old as the last harvest. Okay, I walk away. I need these amulets to cool off. Okay, the closer you are to the village, and the longer you stay around, the sicker you feel. The taste of gastric juices hits your mouth. Your forehead hurts. You start to stumble. So it all, worried by the sight, pokes your head with its nose. I walk far away from the walls. Let's get away from here. Leaning on your mount, you go outside, keeping your mouth shut. After a few minutes, your eyes get clearer. It may be better to leave, or at least to stay away from the village for the rest of the day. You touch, you stop, and touch your stomach, your aching stomach. Blah. Where do you want to go? Can I leave? 
Oh yeah, I could leave. I could just travel away. I think. Maybe I can't travel away. Also, what time is it? Nine hours before dusk. Okay, so I have plenty of time. Okay, let's go to the clearing in the west. Maybe they'll lead out of here. The meadow is lost and colorful, and so dense it's unsafe for a rider. For a couple of minutes, you lead Sodal with a rope, avoiding the potential disaster in case of a hoof falling into the animal den. Before forced to travel around the oh yeah, being forced to travel around the palisade every time you get here is going to be a pain. Most of the tree trunks look similar and have a comparable size. They were most likely planted with the sole purpose of cut, being cut down and used by the locals. Though cutting so many trees at once, that alone would pro uh, could provoke the wrath of the herds. Such a process would be spread across a couple of seasons, and you can't be sure that was the case. In the west and north, it, uh, the, in the west and north, the clearing turns into a wild forest. In the east, you see a road leading north. I leave the clearing. Okay, I found the road to the north. Yeah, still aching again because I'm too close to the village. I go to the road leading north from the village. You're at the closed northern gate. The ne neglected road is partially overgrown. You hear a river in the east, separated by the lush meadow, filled with crickets and rodents. Hmm, I take a closer look at the gate. Uh, let's just get out of here. I go somewhere else. Let's see, where do you want to go? I head to the river. Okay, let me adjust my clock. Okay. You see a quenching family of boars. Some of them brown, some black. You consider turning back, but they pay you little attention. After a couple of grunts, they run north. The river is not too wide, yet unusually deep with banks altered by the locals for decades, if not centuries. <clears throat> Excuse me. The water is cold and clean, yet filled with long plants growing from the bottom. You would rather avoid jumping inside or drinking from it, but you're tempted to at least wash your face, neck and hands. Dozens, if not hundreds of small fish are looking for tasty leaves. Fish eat leaves, but also try to avoid their predators. A dance of life, completely unaware of your presence. You suddenly realize there's something else buried among the kelp. A rusty sickle sticking out of the ground. A couple of stone axes and hoes. The wooden handles and a large wagon are covered with moss. But you recognize their safes. Why would someone drop them here? On the opposite bank, the meadow turns into a thick forest. Impenetrable for our rider. Okay, I guess turn back. I probably shouldn't be too close to the village. Although, if I'm actually not getting worse, it looks like it's probably going to be a stable type thing. How clean am I? Huh. Yeah, let's go ahead and clean up. That might be the best thing to do. Wash myself in the river. The living stream filled with fish and plants won't help you much. Huh. I guess I can't. I should have bought the soap. <clears throat> okay, how about we catch a fish then? I'll spend some time catching up our fish. You place the basket on the ground, then grab a bowl and start digging, looking for a few larger worms. You bait the stick and put it inside the basket, locking it between the sides, then cover the entrance with the lid. Tying it together it takes you a few good moments, but, you, but it will be easier later on. You attach the entire trap to a bus and push it into the stream. Um, it's early in the morning. <clears throat> Far enough that it sinks entirely. Who knows how long it will take before something large enough swims inside. Still, it would be better to not wait for too long. Otherwise, the prey may die of hunger. Huh. Yeah, all right. There should be a way to pass time, isn't there? Uh, maybe not. I thought there was. Uh, wait. Yeah, here it is. 
yeah, I'm not gonna wait that long. Still not even noon yet. So, how about half an hour? I probably should have seen, seen if time passed. Should be past noon now. Oh, okay. Ex expect a fish trap tomorrow or later. Okay, can we travel? Yes, we can. Let's leave this village. You enter the wetlands with their many streams, ponds, and fish. Large birds run and fly between the gray, sparse trees that are covered with moss, mushrooms, and critters. For a human, it may be an unwelcoming and harsh realm, but the overwhelming swarms of insects prove that it's the realm full of life. The danger, with teeth and claws, is hidden below the water's surface. I stay away from the banks. And then what happened? Okay. Seven hours until dusk. Huh. This plant shouldn't be alive, not without leaves. It doesn't resemble the other trees in the wetlands. It's something else. Could the people in the village have been cursed by this tree because they cut down too many trees? You get off your high horse and prepare your axe. The water is... Why do I have my axe? The water is filled with dirt and dead plants, and it smells like an old corpse. The roots are spreading far, breaking through the water surface. You don't see any saurians in the grasses or on the soil. You approach the table-like altar. Okay, it's table-like, so it's, this is really short. It's the uh, altar made of three limestone slabs. Were these rocks originally as formless as they are now? They clearly have a form. Or was there a point in time centuries ago, when they were precisely shaped and decorated by masters of artistry. There's no way to tell. Sodal is peacefully observing the dark grass and slapping flies with its tail. Whatever it is that you feel in the air, it's clear that your companion sees this place through very different eyes. I'm guessing people were sacrificed to the tree. And when they stopped doing that and started cutting more trees, then that caused them trouble. I smile and scratch the bottom of its neck. Go ahead, I'll look around for just a moment. You don't see any creatures, nor humans. I approach the altar. Swamp altar. There is clumped of dirt in the uneven nicks, fused by years of winds and rains. The bottom surface of the table is dusty, but you don't find any spider webs or mold, even though it's a perfect spot for them. The tree roots cling to the altar in many spots. They're firmly attached. You struggle to move them, even by, even by an inch. The cream-filled, uh, the cream-colored limestone is cool and smooth. I don't have much of these. Can I? What can I make? Use your keyboard to name objects that you're interested in. Example: food. Uh, what do I have? I could give him a gold coin. Not my amulets. Soda, I'm not going to sacrifice soda. Okay, how about... Yeah, let's try food then. Let's see what happens. Confirm. You place any type of food you can find in your sacks or on the nearby plants, but n none of them seem to make a difference. Huh. Do I still have my food? Yes. Okay, I'll walk away. Uh, I look into the water. You step cautiously, without knowing how deep it gets. You have to consider that a saurian... Yes, could be camouflaged in the mud, waiting for a victim to get near. Since you don't plan to kneel down and drink, you're hoping to dodge a potential strike. Once you get closer, you start breathing again. Huh. While the water is dirty, it's also shallow. You see the vegetation, swimming insects, and even small fish. All of them stay away from the tree roots, which look like a spider web covering the bottom of the pond. Aside from that, you don't see anything that would catch your ad attention. Huh, is this going to be trouble? Take a closer look. You kneel in front of one that's lying on the sore. It's brown, covered with hair that resembles that of your arm. Uh, on your arm. When you touch it, it's moist, soft, 
and warmer than you'd expect. Okay, stand up. Let's leave this alone. Huh. I guess I could just travel then. Now, I'm pretty sure north is supposed to be good stuff. But we're kind of out of time, aren't we? Yeah. So, we'll make that choice when we get back next time. See you then. Bye.